Bloggers Pow. Right, so I've wanted to do this for a very long time. Here's a look at the games in the 1942 series from Capcom. So, the first game came out in 1984. The series started with a game that was unusual at the time. An American protagonist and the antagonists were Japanese. This was moved by Capcom to produce a game that would appeal to Western markets. It worked and paved the way for a series that would shape games in the future. The American P-38 Lightning is instantly recognisable, as were some of the Japanese aircraft. Maybe one of the first games to have historically accurate and recognisable aircraft. It was one of the first games to include power-ups, so when you destroy a formation of red fighters, you're rewarded with uh, either extra firepower, a screen clearing bomb, or side fighters. At the end of the level, you're given a shoot down percentage rate and attributed bonus score based on this. The levels are unusual. They start at 32 and then count down, number 32 being the Battle of Midway, which is the turning point of the Pacific War, to stage one in the heart of Japan. Then, when you beat that, it sort of sidesteps the only time that nuclear weapons were used in war, and the game just states, we give up. Obviously popular in the arcades, it was converted uh, to the, the NES, the Game Boy, and the home computers. Now, this is how I knew about this game originally was the Commodore 64 version by Elite. It was okay and noticeable because it had the music from the movie 633 Squadron while playing over the top of the game and uh, which was then curiously replaced on the budget and uh, compilation versions maybe due to copyright reasons, who knows. Of course nowadays you can play it on the various Capcom collection packs for from the PS2, PS1 and upwards to uh, the uh, Capcom Arcade Stadium thing that you can see today um, and it's surprisingly I think it has stood the test of time while recording the footage for this so I actually had an absolute blast playing it it's really good stuff still so in 1987 Capcom followed this up with 1943 the Battle of Midway same basic formula but makes a few changes First off, it's two players. Secondly, you only have one life uh, with a depleting energy bar. The depleting energy bar, I think, is a pain in the ass. It actually depletes whether you're taking damage or not, a bit more like a fuel gauge, but I find it really annoying. You also have a lot more power-ups, and they cycle when they're shot, uh, an idea borrowed from Capcom's sidearms from the year before. Uh, these include spread guns, three ways, autos, missiles, but these weapons are all on a timer. They're not limited ammo. Uh, they will run out whether you use them or not, which is, again, I found quite annoying. The levels are alternative between air attack and ground attack stages. One minute you're flying above the clouds, shooting down aircraft, and then the next level you're swooping down to attack ships and more aircraft. The loops return uh, and you can also call on lightning strikes for the air stages and tidal waves for the ground assaults but they further deplete the already depleting energy bar. If you fail to inflict enough damage on the stage boss you're forced to play it again with no refill of energy or weapons which is a bit harsh really. 
Again, it was popular enough for there to be conversions. There's a NES version, which is um, notable because you can actually customize the tributes of the aircraft as you complete stages. And of course the computers, and now these were converted by US Gold under their Go label, and generally speaking they're pretty shit. I don't think this is as notable a game as the original. There's a few flaws in it which I find uh, annoying to play here, but hey, you know, it, it's part of the series. Capcom followed this up with uh, 1943 Kai in 1988, so this isn't really a sequel. This is more like a special edition like a 1943 EX Plus Alpha or something like that. It's mostly the same on the surface. The iconic P-38 Lightnings have been replaced with, by Boeing Stim and biplanes. The stages are more varied, the soundtrack's better, weapons are beefed up and uh, now includes a really outlandish and powerful laser, but they're all still time limited. This was converted to the PC Engine only, uh, aside from obviously the various Capcom collection packs. This version has some overhaul graphics and new music, plus adds five original stages to the arcade's original ten, which I suppose is quite nice. Seems to be the way to play this version of the game, in my opinion. Two years later, Capcom followed up again with 1941 Counter-Attack, this time on the CPS-1 hardware, famous for uh, uh, being the hardware that hosted things like Strider and Ghouls and Ghosts. So going back in time to 1941, back a year from the original, brings more advanced enemies, strangely enough. Uh, the P-38 Lightning is back and brings a uh, Mosquito uh, buddy for player 2. So the CPS-1 brings a huge step forward in graphics and sound, which brings more variety in stages and enemies, including some very un-World War II war machines to shoot down. Some of the bosses are absolutely huge. Some stages have ground scenery, which if you collide with, doesn't kill you, but puts your fighter in a spin, spraying your firepower in all directions, which can be very useful in tight spaces. Like 1943, you only get one life, but the energy bar is replaced by three hit points and does not deplete, thank fuck. The side fighters are back, but by letting the pickup cycle, you can also have a shadow fighter which operates a bit like the options in Gradius. Also taking a staple from a uh, well-known horizontally style and shoot em up, it adds an R-type style charge shot, where you can hold the button down and release it to hit this totally historically accurate conflict with massive damage. 1941 was only ported to the PC Engine Super Graphics. Uh, I believe one of only like six games released for the system. So uh, that's unusual in itself. There was a six year wait until the next game in the series. 1996 brought 19XX The War of Destiny on the CPS2 system. Now, this is my favourite in the series, and also the most outlandish. Any pretense of real world accuracy is pushed aside in favour of a 40s sci fi dynamic with energy weapons, jet fighters, and more elaborate boss encounters, including a very stubborn stealth fighter that keeps on evolving and hounding you after destroying your obviously UN branded mothership at the start of the game. The whole world is in on this conflict against a common enemy. A Japanese fighter is included, the Shinden, for the first time, and joins the P-38 and the Mosquito. The aircraft are selectable by either player and represent the tropes of a speedy one, the armoured tank one, and the all-rounder. Bombs replace the loops of the older games, and weapons are frequent. The charge shot is back again as well, but has a targeting reticle that allows the shot to home in on the selected enemy. Lives are back rather than the energy bar. The graphics on this are excellent and shine as expected from a CPS2 game and coming from a time when 3D was just starting to get a foothold in the industry. Now 19XX did not receive any home love until 2021 when it made it to the Capcom Arcade Stadium on the PS4, Switch, Xbox One and Windows. So that's good news because it's quite easy to play it these days. It'd be another four years before we saw another sequel. The year 2000 brought 1944 The Loop Master. Now this was a hard decision. This is only barely my second favourite in the series. 19XX just pips it. 
1944 is developed not by Capcom but by Raising and is the first game in the series to use a horizontally orientated display rather than the vertically orientated ones he's used in the previous games. The energy bar on One Life is back and the game feels like a welcome callback to the original 1942 despite this. For a late era shooter up it's uncomplicated and fun, it doesn't have waves of bullet hell. Despite the title there are no loops, instead when the charge shot is used you are sent to a higher altitude and briefly rain a powerful strafe attack on the targets below. This has to recharge after the use but can be used whenever you have a breathing room to actually charge it. The graphical style mainly adheres to World War II trappings with the occasional huge boss sitting in the fantasy realm. The CPS board makes it look fresh and significantly different from the other games in the series. The weapons are more traditional, you have the side fighters and screen clearing bombs, player 1 flies the iconic P-38 and player 2 pilots in Mitsubishi Zero, again giving this more of an inclusive United Nations feel against the generic world threatening force. 1944 did not come home until the release of Pack 3 of Capcom Arcade Stadium and that Capcom Home Arcade plug and play stick thing. So, was the franchise forgotten? Sadly, it wasn't. The year 2008 gave us 1942 Joint Strike. The franchise was dragged kicking and screaming into the digital age on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Now this is dull, born of an era where everything had to be 16 shades of brown and rendered in before 3D. I think the developers had too many joints and went on strike. The basic gameplay is true to its roots and borrows elements from many of the previous games, three selectable fighters, there's both energy bar and lives as well as loot and smart bombs, a charge shot makes a return but has limited usage. It's all displayed in widescreen making the play area way too big to be fun. There's a very similar game on iOS called 1942 First Strike but I really can't be bothered to track that down or talk about it so whatever. Now Bloggo, you've missed games I hear you say. I haven't, I just haven't included any. First off is 1945, uh, well 1945 K3, um, published by Oriental Software in 2001. Now this is not by Capcom, it's not licensed by Capcom, it just happens to have the same naming convention, but strangely enough includes um, modern fighter aircraft uh, like Tornadoes and Eurofighters and Tomcats and things, which are uh, again pretty strange. Not part of the series, so that's why I have not included it. Uh, secondly is the Strikers 1945 series, very similar name convention again. This at least has World War II aircraft, at least for the first two games. But this was by Psycho rather than Capcom, very similar kind of game, uh, but not part of the series. So there's 1945 and 1945 Strikers 2. And then Psycho completely jumped the shark with 1945 Strikers Part 3, which goes to modern aircraft again. So you've got a Hornet, a Harrier, a uh, Stealth Fighter, that sort of thing. So again, not part of the series. Now, strangely, Psycho also released a game called Strikers 1945 Plus for the Neo Geo hardware. And this does the... Um, runs on a... Uh, MVS board or an AES depending on which you have in a horizontal format uh, and it seems to be a slight retread of one of the earlier games um, again not part of the series but uh, interesting nonetheless and uh, lastly there was a game released for the Commodore 64 just simply called 43 the year after um, in 1987 by Action Software Evidently they got bored of waiting for Capcom to make 1943, so this came out a year before the Capcom game. Um, and it's just an unashamed 1942 rip-off. Really, really quite poor graphics, really quite poor gameplay, and all, you could have sort of admired the sheer absolute balls of this rip-off. But yeah, not very good at all. Best left alone. 
So there was a long overdue look at the 1942 series of games. I've been wanting to make this video for ages and I had real trouble tracking down a Joint Strike to include. Not that really I should have bothered because it's a bit crap. But anyway, what do you think of the 1942 games? Have you got any favourites? Have you played them before? How did you play them back in the day? What introduced you to them? All these questions and many more you should answer in the comments below. Yeah, subscribe or naff off.